Hello and welcome to another budget 10 legged video. Today we are going to be talking about diffs, differential diffs. Now they're in everything really, well everything is to do with cars. If you've got a rear wheel drive car you'll have a rear diff. If you've got a front wheel drive car well then the, the diff will be inside the gearbox. And it's essentially going to be what's inside here which is what's inside the gearbox. They're all more or less the same. What is a diff? Well a diff differential the reason it's called differential is because it can turn the wheels at different speeds, hence differential. That's essentially it. So we're going to have a look inside this one today. Now I took this one off a Land Rover Freelander, so we're going to have a look at what's in it and what is wrong with this one. Um, and what everything is called. Now when I go through this, I realise depending on where you are on the planet, you might have different names for these things. For example, there's, there's some gears in here, some people will call them side gears, some people call them moon gears. They're just different names depending where you are on the planet, but you're going to get the idea um, from inside exactly what the story is. So, let's get a closer look. Right, so now, let's see. I'm taking all the bolts off. <coughs> now, first thing we can see is for a start you can see all the metal filings now this is a magnet so let me just put my finger in here and see <laughs> now that is oil but that is also all metal filings <laughs> just absolutely full of metal filings so where did these metal filings come from let's get a you can just see oh from a magnet <laughs> and all this here is all metal filings in oil as well so we know something seriously has happened in here but what exactly we don't know for a start it sounds really really bad now there's a few settings I'll go through this setting here I'm holding the bottom and I'm rocking this this is called backlash now again that is way, way too much backlash. So every time you change gear, this goes bang, bang, bang. And you need backlash, but you need only a certain amount of it. If it's too tight, you'll overheat everything and you'll burn everything out. If it's too loose, you'll just shatter everything. Now, what we can see from here is <laughs> just how rough this is for a start. I think the bearings have gone, the bearings have collapsed and all the metal fines and stuff out there the bearings have destroyed it so the easiest way to test it, I'm going to grab this and see if this rocks now that is just play in the bearings, there should be no play there at all so we have just pure play in the bearings so yeah the bearings have basically gone in this all the filings have gone inside and obviously made shit of everything so Let's just turn this so you can see. Hopefully, this is coming through. Let's just get that down there. Now, again, I don't know if this is coming through, but here on the main ring gear, now this is called the ring gear, this big gear here. And again, I don't know if it's coming through, but this should be nice, pointy, well, smooth anyway, gears on this. These are so pitted, not even a dentist could cap these on these teeth. These, these teeth, if this was in a human, they'd be getting uh, false teeth. <laughs> these would be ripped out and you'd be getting a set of dentures. Uh, they're just, it is just so bad. I don't know if the camera's picking up that. That is just so, so rough. So what's happened is all the metal and crap has, has got caught between the two cogs and just chewed absolutely everything up. And here there, this is where we have the actual clever part of the diff. Now you can see this will spin independently of everything. This is what allows you to go around a corner and have your two wheels spinning at a different time. This is the important thing about a diff. If, you're, if this diff was locked and you were to try and go around a corner, one wheel needs to spin spin faster than the other one. Otherwise you're going to do a lot of damage to your tyres and stuff. Now when you weld a diff, and I've done a video on that, this is what you weld. But that's just if you want to go on a track. You, you don't really want to drive on a welded diff on the, cut, on the road because you'll just destroy your tyres and it's quite hard to drive anyway. But for a track use, yeah, no problem at all. But this is what basically gives you the, um, 
to allow both wheels to spin independently, which is what you need. So that's kind of the clever part of the diff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out that part. So there's two bearings here. We're going to whip off them and take out the actual main gubbins of the diff. Right, so all I've done is undone these four bolts, which basically hold the bearings on. So, well, for a start, we can see a lot of wear on these. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up. But that's basically burnt. Hell of a lot of wear there. So that could be overheating, lack of oil, it could be a few things. Um, but I'd say most would be lack of oil. Um, and so we know where we've maybe got some of the filings from. So in other words, this is too small to fit around here, which isn't holding the bearing properly. Let's see what this side looks like. Same thing again, this one's maybe worse, you can see that. This is just like you could say the big end bearings on your car. If you don't have, or if you have too, if, if the metal's gone too far away, it's going to be rattling inside here. It's not going to be keeping this secure, which means all over time, all the bits of shit, all the filings that come off it, are going to go into the oil and going to clog everything up, which is basically what's happened here. Now, um, so that's really, yeah, that is bad. You don't, um... So, what's most probably happened is the actual bearings are most probably okay, the actual bearing part, but the, where it's actually housed is where the damage is, is caused. Now, there is play up and down, so there's obviously some sort of things happen inside the bearings, but I was expecting maybe the bearings have collapsed, and it doesn't look like the roller parts of the bearing have actually collapsed. I think it's just, um, it's got that hot, it's just heated and it's, and it's worn the metal away. I don't know if the camera's picking up on my fingers, but it looks like I'm a 12 year old girl with all the glitter on my fingers. And that isn't glitter, that's all bits of metal filing. Now this should pop out of here. Now, that is bits of metal, <laughs> there's all sorts here. This is one of the bearings, I'm going to clean this up and see what this looks like. Again, it's just full of metal filings. Oh, so I was kind of right saying it's the bearings that I've got. I don't know if you can, if the camera's going to show inside there. See all that horrible roughness? That is supposed to be really, really smooth. And the bearing runs along that nice and easy. All them little bits of um, dimples you can see is all parts of metal that have come out, that have been churned out. Even on here, again, you can see just how bad all the metal's been churned up. So essentially, what I think has happened is the metal has got heated for whatever reason, lack of oil, just for whatever. Um, it's then worn the actual metal. So the diff is basically rattling inside here. And as it rattles, it obviously chips away at the metal and of course it takes a chunk out, takes a chunk out, takes a... Now we're talking very, very fine filings here. But over a period of time, them fine filings add up and they start clogging up everything. But only, not only that, they start taking metal away, which starts making the diff rattle even worse and even worse before it comes to a point where it just goes bang, which is what this did. Um, so yeah, just absolutely unbelievable. Even the bearing, if you can hear that, even the bearing, the main bearing, you can just hear how bad that is. So even that bearing's gone, which would be causing that gear to bend around like this and it's just causing everything. And unfortunately, everything has its tolerances and then it just goes kaboom. Right, before I get onto the main part of the actual diff, let's see, I can see a lot of sludge here. <laughs> this just, this is pure sludge. And what this is, actually <laughs> there's a big chunk of metal there. This is, well, here we go. The camera's going to show this. We have a huge chunk of metal there. So that's off something. Don't know what, maybe a gear or part of the bearing or something. And inside this sludge, the reason why this is pure sludge 
is because this is oil and metal filings and I mean loads and loads of metal filings just look at that so yeah this diff wasn't going to be going any further than what it did so this is the main pinion gear which runs alongside the ring gear on the diff which I'll show you in a second and just behind that we had the bearing as you can hear it is as rough as fuck so bagged is the word the diff casing would be all right I mean there's nothing wrong with the diff casing but it's going to need well having said that possibility the diff casing isn't any good because of the um, marks that are actually where the main bearing sits so actually no the diff the diff casing is gone as well it'd be too risky to try and put that back together so that's that let's get on to the main diff itself right so we have the main diff part itself if you've got an lsd or something kind of a, a, um, a limited slip diff it will look completely different oh what we got here another chunk of metal which is mostly from the diff casing anyway um, if you've got an LSD unit or anything like that which is a limited slip diff which is when you put power to it both wheels spin together it will look completely different to this so this is just a standard kind of a bog standard diff you would find in most common vehicles so we have the diff casing here so the part that goes around is the diff casing we have the diff bearings here so we have one on either side then we have the ring gear which is here which what i was saying that goes on the the pinion gear which spins around here now if you want different ratios of your cars you often hear about um, especially in, in rally cars and racing cars you hear about gear ratios and stuff this is here between this and the other gear i showed you inside the diff if you was to change this this is what can make your car accelerate faster um, more top end less top end it, it's all really clever the, um, basically what you can do is like on my rally car I can make it do 50 mile an hour in first gear which is obviously big or I can make it do 30 mile an hour in first gear now the difference is if I make it do 50 mile an hour in first gear the top end speed is a lot higher but it takes a lot longer to get to it if I put the gear ratio down to it only does 30 in first or 20 in first I limit the top speed but I get to it a lot lot quicker so if you're on a track and you haven't got a lot of straight you just need pure acceleration well then that's what you need to kind of mess around with your diff but that's again that's all for different videos but that's essentially what you need to change to make your car go faster or slower so in the middle here we have the side gears or the planet gears it just depends on um, who you are and, and where you are in the world to what you call these but these are the clever bits this is what allows the wheels to spin independently because this is what is very very important we need the wheels to spin independently for when you're turning around a corner when you're on the road doing 50 60 mile an hour because otherwise you start hearing this big clonking doesn't sound nice and it's not good for your tires or it's not good for your gearbox not good for anything like I said if you wanted uh, a cheap diff and you couldn't afford a proper one for your for your rally car well not so much your rally car well yeah your rally car your drift car anything like that more drift boys they tend to weld the diffs because to be fair once you weld your diff it's a hell of a lot cheaper and for drifting it really doesn't make any difference yes proper diffs are obviously better but they're very they're very expensive so this is kind of the cheaper way around it so that is really essentially that there's nothing really to it the way the ring gear is held on is by all these bolts here so when you undo these bolts that takes off the ring gear that's what allows you to change it for uh, different um, ratios and that really is essentially it there's nothing really to it um, quite complicated but yet very easy um, and very very clever especially with the way these uh, gears work here very very clever and that really is it there's there's nothing there's nothing to it the important thing though is if you are ever changing your diff for whatever reason whether you're putting an aftermarket diff in whether you're doing what no matter what you're doing there is very very important settings you need to do now it always it all depends on what car you're using and on what diff you're using but there's two major settings the first one is the backlash which i was showing you so that's when the pinion gear runs against this and essentially what that is it gives you the gap so it gives you a bit of a slap 
between the gears. If it's, if it's too far pushed up against the gear, what will happen is the gear heats up, it overheats and it will literally blow up. If it's too loose, you'll hear this slapping and as you can see what will happen is you'll just knock chunks off it and eventually you'll knock a complete tooth off and it'll just go bang. So it's important to get your backlash settings right. That is very, very important. Now, so I'll just quickly put this back in just to quickly explain about backlash. So if I hold the main pinion shaft, this is backlash. Now that obviously is too much but we've got a lot of wear on these so you, don't, you, you can't take that into account. But it is essential you get this backlash right. Like I said, if it's too close together, it'll overheat and break. If it's too loose, it will break. So it has to be in the middle. It is very, very important. And depending on your car, depending on um, your diff, that's, it just depends on what backlash you need. But you can put a feeler gauge between the two gears down here, and that's how you get your backlash. Now, that is, like I said, very important. There is one more setting which is important too. Now, there is a special setting to do with this, and it's called a bearing preload setting. Now, it is very important um, if you are changing this. Now, if you haven't changed anything, you're just putting a new diff in, you don't particularly have to worry about this because this should be preset. But if you've moved this bolt or you're tired, you've done anything, you need this special setting. Now, it all depends on the car you're using, the diff you're using, everything. But this is where it gets very, very um, expensive. There is special tools. They're almost like torque wrenches, um, but they've got like a special gauge on them. And they can test the preload of the 